Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. The phone's ringing. How odd. Who would be giving Larry a call at this time of night? Not to say the call is for Larry. It could be anybody. But uh, the contest is over. Well, this will be a... Um, I think our phone sex operator is giving us a call back. Let's see what we have with the Mad Libs. There are so many good answers. And I didn't have a lot of room to put the answers in. So I, I did my best. You pick up the telephone and hear a familiar voice. Hello, Larry. This is Ifen Kovagrogperm. I couldn't fit the whole thing. I was just sitting here on Mooseback and wearing your fine leather jacket and thinking about you, if you know what I mean. Why don't you forget about this silly game and come on over to my place? I'll slip into my superhero cape and we'll curl up in front of the fireplace and I'll stick in our copy of Ten Inch Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know your weenus has always turned me on. So bring along an oblong rubber pipe and come play with my middle toe. Pretty soon we'll both get excited and we'll talk and laugh and fist in the moonlight like we always do. Bye Larry, see you soon. <laughs> I feel dirty, and Larry loves every minute of it. <laughs> and now, back to our regularly scheduled program. And last we left poor Larry, the relationship with Fawn has taken a really quick, sour turn, and it appears he is tied up on his wedding night. I wonder if he has to actually go out and get an annulment. Well, this is a problem, though it really doesn't look like he's tied up. It looks like he's just laying on top of the room. Oh, his arms are tied. I see. Well, fortunately, I think I have something sharp. Perfect. Yeah, this is one of the early Sierra games where if you don't have the item you need, there are dead ends aplenty. Let's try not to stab Larry with it. Though it's oh, he's just asking for it and just cut the ribbon. Right! Using the pocket knife you got from the old bum by the convenience store, you saw through the ribbon holding you to the bed. Somehow... That was really impressive. Did you just flip it up there with your weenus? There we go. Reverse close and kaboom. Done. And you grab your wallet, look inside, and oh, well, at least you didn't find the 10 bucks you had hidden in that secret compartment. With your commensurate gambling skills, you should be back on your feet in no time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have to grind for money all the flip over again. But I think... This ribbon is the answer to our, uh, that, that, uh, window problem. There we go, good idea. In, what was it, Lefty's bar. Can we grab the wine, too? That seems like something good to have. You grab the bottle that once held the suggestion of a happy marriage, but now holds nothing more but the bitter dregs of your honeymoon gone bad. You unscrew the top and fortify your courage with a long, hard belt. Of wine? Alright, you screw the lid down tightly and quickly replace the bottle in the wine bucket. So you just take a shot. Alright, well, whatever. Alright, enough of this music. It just brings back bad memories. It's so quiet. Like my sex life. Uh, says Larry. Moving on. Well, I guess our job now is to build our funds back up. I can't remember what we need money for. I... Ugh. Do we need money at all? I got ten bucks. Well, we're gonna need it for cab rides, if nothing else. All right, well, back to the video poker machine, I guess. Be with you in a minute, folks. All right, we're almost there now. This kind of harkens me back to the days where, uh, you know, they would always include mini games with, uh, with all these, like, Larry had this extra, I think it was called, like, the Larry Applications or something, and it had, like, a joke machine and video poker and all this kind of thing. So they really took this seriously. I think they did the same thing with, um... Uh, hit me. Uh, damn. Uh, with uh, Space Quest 6, I think it was. They released some mini-games with that, and they used that that weird burger-making game. They released that as a standalone mini-game, but it didn't really work. They did that a lot. I wouldn't mind actually going back and taking a look at all those old games, those old standalones. Eh. There we go. So we got our $10,000 back. We got a wad full of cash. But I only have, like, a cursory remembrance of what I'm supposed to be doing now. Uh, let me see. We still have... 
Our disco cart. Well, that disco is done because we already met Fawn and she already ruined us. Uh, let's see. Apples. I can use the hammer to go get one other item I'll need to proceed. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, honestly, I think the game actually might even be almost over at this point. Ugh. All right, here we are back in Lefty's bar, and I'll tell you what, we have so much money, let's put in what we want. Let's see, Bolari, uh, bop, 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 bop. how about, that's a sweet moon, honey, let's see what that one's all about. Oh man, it's the same radio song we tried to escape from the hotel room. Crap. Honestly, it, this is actually one of my favorite bits of music in the entire game, is is the porn music. I can't help it. It's just got such a funky little beat. I'm going to use that for the phone call. Uh, you'll probably hear that again. Up we go. All right. There you are, miss. Don't care about you. Good to see you again. Out the window. Bye. This is a puzzle in and of itself. It's just kind of getting the game to do what you want because what we want is we use that ribbon, we attach it to the railing, and then we attach it to ourselves, and then we kind of, uh, I don't know, just kind of bounce over there and grab whatever's in that window. And then we need, the, I think we use the hammer to break it and get whatever's in there. We don't know why we want it, or do we? Can we see it? Nah, I can't really see it. Okay, but you know you want it because it's there. All right, so we use the ribbon. Let's tie it to the railing first. Tie it to me. There we go. Tie the ribbon around your, from your nuptial bed around your waist. There we go. Everything's lovingly animated. I love it. And then we tie it to the railing. There we go. And then, ah, whoop. With coy pink ribbon rather insecurely holding you over the railing, you can reach all the way over to the window. Now, of all times, you notice that the window is locked, but that does not matter because we can break and enter. Suddenly, you smash the window with your left-handed hammer. Even though he's using his, in that position, he'd be using his right hand. Your fears were unfounded. It seems to work either way. Your, your future as a second story man now seems quite plausible. Kapoosh. All right, and grab it with your hand. There we go. Got him. What the heck are they? Up, 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 up. There we go. Whew. I think if you do stay there long enough, you do fall to your doom. Uh, whoop. You're glad to be back on the relative scape. The fire scale. I talk real good. All right, let's untie ourselves. And now we have a bottle of... Even though the uh, portion of the label is missing, you can still make the words nish and fl. Well, it's obviously a bottle of floor varnish. It didn't say what, what uh, order these words in, so it's floor varnish. That's beautiful. Somewhere there are going to be some floors that are going to be sparkly clean. I wish there was some sort of like a high rollers lounge. Oh, that's actually an interesting point. If you ever decided to speedrun this game, you would have to keep your breath fresh at all times because these text windows always pop up saying, Oh, God, your breath is so bad. So you have to do pretty much, I guess, what we call in this instance a one spritz run. That sounds like a lot of fun. I bet uh, this game is speedrunnable. I bet no one ever done this one before. Hey, I set the record in King's Quest V. I can do this one. Hey, uh, f oh yeah, yeah, I should probably, uh, fix that. There we go. Beautiful. They should have come out with Larry Bl Brand, uh, Breath Freshener, like Bianca or whatever. All right, well, hello. Oh, this is a really weird, I don't know why, okay, well, whatever. That doesn't really matter why, but if you give her the Spanish fly, it drives her crazy, and that makes her, well... Faith only gives the bottle of Spanish fly a quick glance before saying, Boy, thanks! How did you know I love this stuff? She tossed back a few pills and a few more, and then finally gulping down the whole bottle, her breathing becomes faster and faster. She begins to pant. Thank you for not animating her tongue out of her face. She's really getting turned on. Looks like tonight's your lucky night, Larry. I'm out of here, Faith! Says I gotta get home to my boyfriend before this stuff wears off. Hey! Thanks a lot, buddy. Face shouts out to kill. We'll do it once for you. <laughs> Twisting her key in the lock, she disappears on the unmarked employee staircase. Sorry, Larry. It appears Faith is true to her name. Well, Faith is gone, but now we have access to everything Faith owns. 
or just this penthouse door elevator? I thought there was more stuff to do back there, but I guess not. Uh, seems like kind of a strange place to put her desk facing the wall over this way. The people are coming down the elevator over here. You should put a desk like here facing this direction. I don't know. I'm interior decorating in the Larry game. Up we go. Now this is where Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded really gets uh, really gets different because they they branched and expanded a lot of the puzzles in the game for in, in a better way. Look at more of these stupid statues. These things were everywhere in the 90s, like these wire form statues. Ugh, I hate it. Anyway, uh, the love of her life is actually out this door, but we need to do a few more things for some extra points. By the way, uh, probably should blur those out. What's this on the desk anyway? Uh, don't bump your shit on that table. Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's go over here. There we go. Just bopping around somebody's penthouse. Uh, kind of, I kind of like this asymmetrical sort of, this kind of like a Ming the Merciless bed thing happening here with some really accentuated collars. I really want to fix that picture frame. Oh, that's disgusting. Be glad you don't have a higher resolution screen. Well, I do. I have a 720 screen, but no, I have a 1080 screen, but this game is like in like 240 or something. What's this? A portrait of Jesse Helms. Oh, because he's a boob covered in leeches, apparently. What's in here? Oh, hi. Do you need assistance? It appears to be an inflatable doll. I'll take that. This is the flattest babe you've ever felt, Larry. And so we got this inflatable doll here. And I think if memory serves, this is like one of the only instances, well, useful instances rather, where you can use the nose and mouth uh, icon to blow her up. Am I right? There it is. You huff and puff and you blow your doll up. Holding out her arms like to pause to admire your handiwork. That's awful. That's just, let's never, ever, ever look at that again. Well, when in Rome. All right, we have no choice. We're up here at the penthouse with the love of our life literally about 50 yards away, and we're about to stoop a plastic doll. All right, since you asked for it, in fact, you asked for it twice, here we go. Selecting your own personal favorite from the three available openings, you shyly try out the doll. This has been the kinkiest thing you've ever done, Larry. You have not gotten out very much. You gradually increase your tempo as you lose your inhibitions, not to mention your self-esteem. Faster and faster you go until suddenly there's a loud, flatulent sound. As he very slowly goes to chase the doll after a scene of extreme depravity and uh, moral virtue lost. It leads us where we should have gone in the first place, which is out to the hot tub. Here we go. Another one of these stupid things. Look at how tall it is. This is not bad. Extremely 90s. And she's on a rooftop garden. Look at that. Hooters on a stick. Holy Hooters on a stick, Batman. A beautiful black woman relaxes in the penthouse suites rooftop garden spa. You begin to get the feeling that your evening and lost wages may be successful after all, provided she does not kick you out for breaking into her house. She seems really cool with it, though. Hey, gorgeous! Are you allow me to introduce myself, you say? My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Hello yourself, Larry, she responds. What an attractive leisure suit. I so miss them. It's refreshing to meet a man with so much self-confidence that he's willing to flaunt the fickle trends of fashion mores and deeply travel down the road of his own secure masculinity. Was, was she talking to you, Larry? Well, um, yeah, I, I've always felt it is, oh, uh, look, that's right for me. A man has to do what a man has to do, I always say. She smiles up at you. I agree completely. I am so tired of men who wear or say anything just to gain a woman's favors. Gee, <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> to her, you say with a smile, and I do so love what you are wearing. She laughs, and a sense of humor. Larry, you are one special man who broke into my apartment. Why don't you slip into the water and we'll see if we can really get to know each other. Whoa, moving fast, but that's fine by me. Larry, glancing around, you notice no changing facilities nearby. Now, ah, what the hell? There we go, the same changing animation we've seen many times before. And a belly flop into the pool. Wasting no time, you execute your previously only pre-visualized spa hop. 
landing in the warm water. Ooh, does it feel good. It's nearly as stimulating as the beautiful naked woman next to you. With the warmth of the water soaking into your body, you quickly become quite relaxed. There's a bubbles are moving really fast around you, Larry. I'm a little bit worried about your fiber intake. Now, this is the part of the game, this is where you sort of, uh, I think Leisure Suit Larry 6 had a similar ending where you kind of give her things that represent who you are and to make her think that you're better than you, person than you actually are. Uh, but if you did, if you just kind of landed up here, the first thing, then you have to go back and, you know, go on a scavenger hunt for all the things you think that you might need. But, uh, in this case, they, they were smart enough to make the puzzle that you need to solve to get up here later in the game, so you should pretty much have everything you need. Oh, do, are, do you, are you stoned? Or do, or do you, have you been drinking? No, I'm over here. Look at me, Eve. Eve, this is an intervention. Look at me, thank you. You, you, Eve? Eve, would you please? No, never mind. Alright, well, you may have noticed this little red button over here. Uh, can't show you a thing, but you do get a couple extra points for it. There we go. No, nope, it's not worth any points whatsoever. But there it is. Uh, pixelated breasts and all their pixelated glory. Well, I meant to say glory, but also meant that I had to blur it out, so... Pixelated blurry! That will do. Who loves ya, baby? She says nothing, but her smile tells you bushels. Oh, maybe that's a hint that she wants an apple. Because you give her an apple, for some reason that curries her favor, but... Uh, tells you bushels. Wink. Have you ever tried it underwater? You coyly ask. She doesn't say. What's your name, gorgeous? She says nothing, but her smile speaks volumes. Okay. Uh, so she's not talking to you. After a few smiles, it appears she's a woman of few words. She's waiting for you to determine what it is she wants. Well, that's fickle. Well, she adopted the knife. Oh, do you want a knife? Do you want my knife? Can I knife? Oh, I wonder what happens if you just use the condom on her. That might be useful to you later, she says with a smile. Wink. Wow. We never really use this magazine for anything. What if we give her the magazine? Eve is interested in one sweet thing, and that's not it. Why does it have a picture of, like, a jug with it? Uh, oh, because it's called jugs. I get it. She's looking at it. She is interested. What happens if I move it over here, Eve? Do you want to take a look at it over here? Oh, no, it's over here. Oh, she's shy. Okay, fine. Being coy. Okay, fine. Here's the apple. This is the linchpin to the entire game. Eve takes your apple and with a sweet, innocent look, raises it to her mouth. She takes a small bite and lowers her arm as a sexy smile comes across her face. She winks then, almost imperceptibly, she lies back slightly, sliding deeper into the water and chews delicately. Eve gently slips her sensuous tongue around and around the lucky apple. Tiny drops of the apple juice glistening on her lips. She's really turning you on. You had no idea fruit could be so exciting. I'm sorry about that voice. I don't know where that came from. Eve is just, uh, she's a base. After a few bites of your apple, Eve slowly slides out of the hot tub, her steamy, naked body glistening in the moonlight, barely covering her tremendous assets, which she really must have in order to afford a really nice apartment in Las Vegas. With a towel, she tosses you a towel, smiles, and motions for you to follow her. All right, like, say, Larry, smiles Eve. You really are glad to see me. Yes, pixelized erection. Go for it, Larry. And I guess this is the opposite of a walk of shame. She made it there fast. There we go, Larry. Good job, Larry. You found love, or at least you found someone that can tolerate your uh, your presence. That's amazing, and it only cost you an apple. And I guess, actually, I guess getting all that money back was completely unnecessary. It just needed 20 bucks for a cab ride. No, well, about 40 bucks. I had to go two ways. All right, they're fireworks. We get it. They're pretty. Whoa, Scissor Sisters. Congratulations, Larry. You've done it. You successfully completed your evening in lost wages, lost your virginity, and emerged victorious. Of course, your feelings of success are short-lived, since this is where Ken Williams has to tell you about all the wonderful sequels this game has now that you're required to play. Hey, Ken, come on out here and give me your pitch. 
Yes, this happens in every version of the game. Oh, he's wearing a leisure suit and stutter shades. Check him out. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Williams. Looks like he's holding a pipe. Hi, right, folks. As CEO of a major software publisher, you might think I'm above pitching products for how low. Boy, would you be wrong. I don't want to be pushy, but in my humble opinion, I think you owe it to yourself to run out to your local 24-hour software store right now and grab yourself a copy of every chapter in the now seemingly never-ending saga of Larry, Larry Laffer, Outlaw's lovable lounge lizard. You would really enjoy Leisure Suit Larry too, looking for love in several wrong places, which has you help Larry abandon his lizard-like ways and find true love on a breathtakingly beautiful tropical paradise called None Tonight Island, in spite of the efforts of the KGB and the evil Dr. No Nookie. Did you say Larry 2, which is coming up next, is, uh, I don't think it's ever been remade in VGA or anything, but, uh, it is a balls hard game. It's a really tough game, but rewarding, but very rewarding. Or you may prefer Leech Suit Larry 3, passionate Patty in pursuit of the pulsating pectorals, which lets you play part of a game of Larry, but also play as passionate Patty, a woman who is everything that Larry is not, and has everything Larry does not, too. Oh, tell them about Leisure Suit Larry 4, Ken, that's the best. But I really hope you select my personal favorite, Leisure Suit Larry 5. Passionate Patty does a little undercover work in which Patty truly comes into her own, helping the FBI clean up the entertainment industry while Larry must find the sexiest woman in America for his employer. Now, that hot new syndicated television program, America's Sexiest Home Videos. Well, enough about me, let's hear about you. He says as he walks away very slowly, I guess he's heading down to the casino floor, otherwise going to the hot tub. Farewell, Ken, CEO of Sierra Online. Oh wait, I almost forgot to tell you how well you played. You played okay, I guess. I think that's just a reflection on your total score, but uh, the only thing I missed was the phone call, I think. On behalf of Al and Marge, Ken and Roberta, Oliver and Lisa, Mike and Laura, Bill and Patty, Bob and Janine, and Ted and Alice, thanks for playing, and be sure to tell each and every one of your friends to buy their own personal copy of the game. I don't know, that's, love you, baby. That's, I guess, uh, whatever, some sort of weird satirical thing. Oh, that's really fast. Got executive producer Ken Williams, etc., etc., Bill Davis, blah, 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 blah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was Legion Suit Larry 1, a game that has been remade twice, I think? This is the original remake of the VGA. The original one was the, uh, the AGI, I guess, the original one. And this is the SCI. I always get that backwards. And then there's the Reloaded, which is actually really good. If you like Leisure Suit Larry 7, Love for Sale, then you would like the remake of the first game. Anyway, that's it for Leisure Suit Larry 1. That's the beginning of the saga. So we're going to move on to what... Oh, Josh Mandel did all the text. Oh, yeah, Josh Mandel. He's been a long-term Sierra guy. He is also the voice of uh, King Graham. Amongst other people, but he's uh, yeah, he's great. He's actually still really active in the Sierra community. If you ever go to the Sierra uh, Facebook group, he's he's usually bopping around. You can actually few, find a few of the original Sierra guys there. Anyway, that's it for me. I will see you in the next game. And as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. No.